This is hopefully the last episode on the uh, teardown part of the series here. We're just going to get the crank out. We can kind of look at the bearings and uh, thrust washers. That's pretty much it. Should it be like eight bolts, I think, something like that, and pull this baby out. Uh, either this weekend or next weekend, motor's going up to the machine shop. Um, we're going to get a board out with a half mil bigger pistons. And then we got, obviously, pistons and then rods and have them measure clearances on the crank and uh, bearings for the rods and all that stuff. So And port the head. So, and deck. Um, clean everything. Check everything out. So, yeah. I'm super freaking excited. Uh, just, just need to get this crank out and then I can load the stuff in the boxes, shove some blankets in them, throw them in the, in the car, and uh, hopefully be on my merry way tomorrow morning. But find out here in a little bit. Wait for him to get back to me to see if I can go up there this weekend or what. Um, yeah, let's just uh, get to it. The book doesn't say anything at all for removal. Um, there's not even a removal part in the book. So I talked to a couple friends and they said just, there's nothing special about it. Pull the bolts, pull the caps, pull the crank out. So let's get to it. There's one, two, four, six, eight. 10. So, 10 bolts. Be able to wiggle this baby right on out. Um, I'm going to mark, number all these, and uh, we'll get to it. As always, here, I'll break one loose um, live and then we'll uh, time lapse it. Don't die, please. <laughs> um, got her here to hold the block still just in case this stuff's super torqued, which. Absolutely sure it is. So we just start here. Oh boy, I didn't. Wasn't a ratchet skip. There we go. That's not too bad at all. I think those are are more loose than the the rods. The rods were not bad. All right. It's time lapse. Okay, so I got the first cap off. Here we go. It's kind of a pain to get out there, and they're super tight. And these bearings are, look how thick those are. Very cool. Sorry if it's a little blurry, but uh, it's definitely a pain to try and get out. And I should probably mark which way they face, too. Let me find a. Are they all? Oh, no, they are opposite. I'm going to get a picture of this, and then uh, we'll try and get these. These other ones out, these end ones are going to be easier than these center ones. It's going to be a fun time here. Well, I hate to admit when I feel stupid sometimes, but it's kind of funny. We just sat here for probably, what, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Actually, this is the first time when, like, uh, disassembling this block, I had to look something up on YouTube, and it didn't, it didn't even help. I'm just trying to figure out, because this end one came out decently easy, and so did this end one. And these center ones, I don't have room to like really do anything because it's right up against the crank obviously so i'm like putting the bolts back in trying to like squeeze them together to like pull it out and trying to like rock them back and forth literally zero play and you can kind of see here like uh we're looking on like ls motors and other things these like usually stick out on other motors and they're like not in between like the actual casting of the block so obviously these kind of act as like some type of structural support Makes sense, right? Whatever, whatever. I thought there might just be like some pressure. Like when you put the bolts in, it might like push this out a little bit. So it like, I don't know. But I was wrong. I'm looking from an angle, which you guys might be able to see. You can barely see um, something right there. Well, I didn't know what that was. I was like, oh, well, maybe it's a spot for oil relief or something weird. And I was like, wait, that doesn't even make sense. Because there's bolts in there. Like, that doesn't make sense. And then I looked down. There's some bolts on the sides that hold the caps in. Now, I'm telling you, you guys, I'll put the link down below again for the book. Um, there's no disassembly for this in the book. It would have been nice to know that those existed. So, now you guys know, and uh, now I'm going to pop those off and hopefully get these caps right out, along with the crank. All right, well, now that those bolts are out of the side, um, the caps rock, and I can pull them out. Interesting how that works, huh? Still kind of a pain. Um, you don't want to lift straight out. 
Ugh. It's so slippery. Just like pull up on the crank a little bit. Nope. Oh my gosh. Did not want to do that. But all the bearings look really good so far. I'll show you guys at the end here, but what a pain in the butt. Now there's there's two outside middle ones. Came out decently easy. I just like had two fingers, one for like kind of rocking and like two fingers for kind of lifting. So I was double action going on here, you know. Anyway, that center one was a pain in the dick. That one was a real asshole. So um, I guess I'll pull the crank out, set it down here, and then uh, we'll go over it. All right, we're gonna pull this crank out. It looks pretty freaking beefy. Um, actually, I want to show it to you guys. Spin in here. Pretty interesting. Not really. I guess if you've seen this before, you've seen them all, but it's just cool to see to me. Mind you, this is a first for me, all of this. So, I'm learning. It's very interesting. All right, let's pull it out. I wonder if it's going to be like kind of stuck in place or, or not. I don't think it would be. It does look pretty beefy. I'm scared. My hands are super oily here. Oh, yeah. She's definitely heavy. Wow. That's crazy. I did not expect these bearings to be slit like that. That's how they get their oil. That is so neat. And you get a, the best look we've had so far on the piston squirters. Very neat. Okay, and then this center one, this is the... When you guys hear crank walk, um, this is what they're basically referring to is these two washers right there, these thrust washers, they fail and then it allows the crank to have, you know, that much more play, that thickness, and it'll have that much more play and then eventually your motor will break. Um, I don't know if this is sitting in here funny because, yeah, okay. So they, they have like little groove spots where they sit in. Very cool. I thought that these, I honestly thought, I never, I never even looked up what thrush washers look like or anything. I thought that they were like pressed onto the crank at the ends, at like both ends or something. I had no idea that they were in the center until I saw the uh, parts break down on the, uh, in the book from Volkswagen. So that's actually really neat to see. And uh, it should just pop right, yeah, they pop right off. So we'll definitely inspect those, but they don't, at least from, Right here at this angle, they don't look massively worn or anything. So, um, I'll give you guys another close up here. You can really see bearings. I wish this thing would focus right. Eh. There's nothing, nothing serious to see. They all look good to me, but who am I? I didn't wipe them off yet, but. So, those, those are those. That's a puppy. Hi, buddy. Oh. Okay, here's the crank, and it is surprisingly heavier. I, I knew it was going to be kind of heavy, but I did not expect it to be. Hey, get back, get back. We all love you, but uh, you're looking no oil. So, here's the crank. You got these, uh, is it called a journal still on the opposite side? I don't know. But uh, where the bearings go, I mean, this thing is smooth, like smooth, smooth, all around. Um... Talked to my buddy Cliff. He said he did not take this off, so it doesn't. Like, if you take this off, there's something in the book that says that these bolts will deform and they absolutely need to be replaced, but there's no reason to take it off. Heavy duty. That's a heavy duty. Just, I mean, I don't know. Compared, I have nothing to compare it to personally, but to me, it seems pretty heavy duty. And then get over here looking at these guys. Um, they practically all look the same. There we go. Here's a decent look at it. Uh, I did wipe my finger in there a little bit. Probably put a little bit of dirt, but they don't look bad. Nowhere near as bad as the freaking uh, the rods. Yeah, people said that it was normal wear. So if that was normal wear, then this is like really good normal wear. I mean, there's you can kind of see like some of the machining lines. I'm assuming, but like you can't feel them. You can just kind of see. They all look really, really nice. To me, I'm, mind you, I'm not a professional here, but 
So that's out. That's awesome. I bet you the block weighs about half the freaking weight now. But uh, let's go ahead. We'll get these out and set next to their caps. And then we'll really look at um, these thrust washers. Okay, so here is the thrush washers. Oh my god! Wow, okay, so before I was rudely interrupted by the excess weight of the crankshaft on this very thin pan that I should have known not to set this on, but lesson learned. But it did show me one thing. In the book it, it mentions um, how everything's color-coded, and I was like, what? You can see, like, that's green, and this used to be green. Um, a lot of these, all the rest are red. You can kind of see this one still has a good red to it. See, they're red. And the colors have to do with, I believe, their position and their size. That's what the book was saying, something like that. But uh, anyway, so this is the outside of the washers. So sitting like this, and this one's sitting, this is what the outside of the crank so it's like it sits in the middle and it's going to be the outsides so facing outward this is the wear on them this one looks a little bit like a little bit more worn if anything but you can't feel there's nothing to be felt and then on the other side the insides you can still see the part numbers on them the camera doesn't pick it up you can kind of, there you go you can kind of see it still has a part number on it it still has the audi and volkswagen symbols on them so, I mean, they are, I mean, just ever so slightly somewhere, but like even the small little etching there on the end, you can still see. So, that's a good sign, I'm assuming. But, uh, yeah, other than my crank falling through this thing, other than the crank falling through this thing and those three middle ones giving me kind of a pain for, uh, actually, I don't have this in the right order, but you can see, actually, it's a good comparison. See how that one has a hole. And that one doesn't. And some of them do. So this is actually an end one. Swap that back. After knowing that, it was a lot less of a hassle today. So there's that. Um, I'll let you guys know more. Hopefully he gets back to me tonight and lets me know. Because I really want to get knocked this out. We have like a four-day weekend, uh, you know, for New Year's and shit. So I'd like to get up nice and early tomorrow, do my traveling, drop this shit off and uh, get super hammered tomorrow. So <laughs> be nice to get this out there and then I got something to look forward to right as the new year starts. I need to get them to measure the bearings and stuff um, so I know exactly what ones to order. I have diff some people were saying king bearings, some people were saying, oh, what was the other, calico maybe? Something like that, something with a C. But like a lot of people were just saying just use OEM uh, rod and main bearings, so. I'm going to talk to a couple more people just to confirm because I, I want to do this right. I don't want to cut any corners, none of that shit. So I want to have the proper bearings, like to, to replace, get in there and replace bearings. I don't want to do that ever, like ever. That doesn't sound like fun at all, especially with the motor in the car. And no, especially for the crank, that's going to be impossible. The motor's definitely going to have to come out. So I want to do this right the first time, get her done. But, uh, so I need to order bearings. Um, I do believe I have the bolts for the caps here, um, but I have to double check. I need to order, like I said, uh, rear main seal, clutch hardware, um, I need to send my injectors out to get clean and get the new seals on them, um, and just a couple other odds and ends. The interior stuff too, I need to order another seat, two brackets, hardware for that, uh, harness bar, seat belts, lot, all the braking fluids. Um, trans fluid and I might even order the CAE shifter so a lot of things going on I was really hoping that stimulus check would be two grand because that would really help everything but oh and the website is almost ready well it pretty much is ready I just need to connect to my PayPal and basically go live but like I finished paperwork today on my selling my house so once I get that money and like I still got to call and disconnect the water and the electric and uh, my house insurance once all that stuff's done and off my plate then I'm gonna like I'll be able to turn all my focus Or at least a lot more focus towards the car and getting the build done so especially with the new year off the bat There's an event early February um, That a buddy of mine um, that They're throwing on in Texas. So I mean that would be super dope 
to have the car ready by then, but I highly doubt it. Between all the suspension tweaks we got to do and the retuning and all the break-in miles and shit, so I'd still like it to have mid-February, but definitely by March. March TX2K 21. It's a big thing. Definitely, that'll be like probably the first big outing with the car. So if you guys aren't busy in the middle of March, um, try and make your way down to Houston. It doesn't matter. People say, oh, you need a thousand horsepower car to have fun down there. Bullshit. I took this car down there on the stock IS38, stock suspension. I just barely put a cat back on a couple days before, and I had a freaking blast. So, and it's a manual. You know it's slow. I had a great time. So, anyway, um, I don't need to show you guys. It's just like a T30 maybe to get these oil squirters out. It's just a bolt, and it pulls right out. So, that's the next thing to come off. Put those in the bag, get a couple of these extra brackets that's been sitting on the car out, and uh, just bag everything up. Box, I got all these boxes there that are empty, ready to go. And boxes here, parts and stuff, but get all that done, throw it in the car, and hopefully to the machine shop this weekend. So make sure you guys drop, drop a thumbs up, really helps the channel. If you haven't seen any of the other, other episodes of the Disassembly, please go watch them. Drop a thumbs up there too, it seriously helps the channel. Uh, be on the lookout for merch, and uh, Hope you guys have a great New Year. This is the last video of the year, unless I make like some race car shit. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you on the flip flop.